Top of the morning to you, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you may be watching. My name is Scott, I represent the SL and Game Slam here with Sergio for the next installment of the Pokemon Blue Nuzlocke, and we are going to do a quick team recap because I think it was bad juju that we skipped that last time. That was some bad Juju Smith Schuster. So we got Kevin the Pidgeotto here, very balanced statistics to level 24. Followed by Abag, who gave us a scare at the end of last episode. Also level 24, very ferocious looking, very high attack stat. We have Austin level 26, Pinhead Larry, highest level, longest living member of the team. We have Nickman, who just flashed everybody. Newest member of the team, level 18, currently training up. And Cornus Boy, the old reliable. Middle Queen, level 24. Unfortunately, last time we had to say rest in peace to Jobin because of some blunderage on my part and some douchery by the hikers. So I would like to get out of this cave as soon as possible to avoid Pokemon such as this. Um, I thought we still had a repel up. I just kind of assumed that. I, of course, assumed wrongly. So we are going to spray some axe around this cave and keep going. That is a dead end there. So I'm going to try the south side of Chicago here. We're going to loop around and we see a lady, which brings me to my strategy for this episode. I am going to put a bag in the front if we see a hiker. And Sugar, I forgot to put Nick Man in the front, but I feel safer uh, leading off with him in other trainer battles besides Hikers. Because as we know, those guys are hoisting some thermal detonators. As we see Jigglypuff with a little defense curling. A little defense curling. And it is going to fail on the Disabled. So we should be able to take it out next time. Ooh, I jinxed it. I jinxed it because it is singing all over us. And we're of course going to speed that right up because sleep in gen one is just all sorts of messed up. All sorts of broken. All sorts of Humpty Dumpty. Kevin going to 25, not bad. Not bad, we see Pidgey is going to come out next. Of course, I'm going to go into Nick Man for a little experience. Um, I would use him if he had an electric attack. Um, you know what? Let's see what Sonic Boom does. It's not like a Pidgey's going to do 29 damage. So let's see what Sonic Boom does. It's a three hit KO. I might be getting Nick Man's first knockout here. So one more. Oh, don't switch me out. <laughs> I was going to say, that'd be so douchey to use Whirlwind on a level 18 Voltorb. So Nick Man's going to pick that one up, getting some nice XP. And uh, Meowth is going to come in. I am going to switch on that and put Austin in the front. No cheat codes were used, kids. Just a heads up, I used Super Potions off screen to bolster the team to uh, keep going through this cave. We are pretty low on potions now. Um... So we're going to risk it a little bit for the biscuit here. Um, in hindsight, probably should have cut, gone back, healed, got super potions. But we're just going to see what happens. Um, I know there's a good amount of trainers outside the cave as well. But I don't want to think about that yet. I just want to get through this godforsaken cave. I see a hiker here. So we're going to go with the strategy, which is not lead Nick Man. We're not going to lead him in case there is a Geodude or Graveler. We want to be able to snipe him right out of here with a bag. So I, I know my bones were shaking last time, but we're not going to put ourselves in a position. We only have eight bubble beams left. Okay. That's concerning, actually. That's actually a little concerning. But in the meantime, we're just going to keep plowing through these rocks. Because they are nothing to be trifled with. 
as we found out from trifling with them last time. So two Geodudes down, we have a Graveler to go. And they're really not threatening when we take them out this way. Unfortunately, last time I was so caught up in my ways of switch training that I put our boy Jobin in a dangerous position and a bag in a dangerous position as well. Trying to learn Dragon Rage. That's actually pretty good for this stage of the game. For you kids at home, this is a move that does a fixed 40 damage every time. So at this stage of the game where like good Pokemon have 80s HP, uh, that's pretty good. Hiker says, oops, out muscled. You know, that's kind of ironic because I did just come from the gym. Um, I did change my shirt. Uh, this is not the shirt I wore to the gym. Uh, it shows a little too much bicep, so I'm trying to be courteous to the other members. But I did come from the gym, so I'm glad the hiker noticed. You have a Pokedex, I want one too. Okay, throw it on the Amazon wish list, man. Throw it on the Amazon wish list. As we see Slowpoke hit the field, these are a little scary with the psychic attacks, so I'm not going to use Cornus Boy. Um, I think Austin is a pretty safe bet here. I'm going to go to our boy Charmeleon. I still have the Austin card right over there, but you guys have seen it before. You have seen it before. Seismic Toss, 26 damage. What's that looking like? What's that looking like? Not bad. Not bad. Probably our best bet, I'm assuming. I am assuming, but I'm thinking based on, uh... Just the damage here. Two more of these tosses should work. Unless it's disabled? Disabling Ember. That's... What are you doing, man? What are you doing, man? So since we're kind of comfy cozy right now, in the meantime, you know, it's not going to last forever. Uh, no such thing as a free lunch, kids. That was decent XP, so, so we'll switch training in. Um, I do have to bring up a very controversial topic of conversation that occurred around the workplace uh, today. So, to preface this, um, I am not someone who has eaten a wide variety of foods. I do not have the most developed palate, as they say. Uh, I'm a pretty simple guy. I'm a PB&J lunch guy. Uh, PB&J yogurt. Um... I'll eat a banana uh, mid-morning, breakfast, I'm usually oatmeal or cereal, so nothing too crazy. Um, and the reason I bring that up is it was uh, proposed that we go to lunch at work. Uh, this was last week, and someone suggested Thai food, and I personally am just not a big fan of Thai food. Um, I have had it before, and I, I didn't really like it. Maybe I just ordered something weird, but I did not really like the Thai food. And so someone, of course, brought that up, and I said, you know, I'm just not the biggest fan of Thai food. But my compromise is if we do get Thai, I'm watching the HP here, um, how about you order for me? Because I assume people who like Thai food know what's good on the menu. So that was our compromise, and of course, people were kind of busting my balls about it in the first place, just that I didn't really want the Thai food. Um, so, as that story went, um, we ordered it. Uh, what did I get? Pineapple fried rice. I, do, I will recommend, because I did enjoy that. Um, let me heal Austin up. With where the team's at, I want to keep our members at a pretty high HP. So we'll heal him up to full. And continuing with the story, I enjoyed the fried rice. Pineapple fried. Um, and of course, people were like, you know, giving me some malarkey about not liking Thai food and how I always eat PB&J. I get that at work all the time. So that's last week. Now we get to this week. Now we get to why I brought up the story in the first place. And rest in peace, Jobin, by the way. Rest in peace, buddy. I'm not really comfortable enough with Nick Man staying in at this point. So, let's give Cornus Boy some screen. Let's give KB some screen. So, that's not going to affect him. You see those reads? You see those reads? Um, yeah, we use Body Slam. So, we get to this week, alright? 
Nice paralysis, Cornus boy. Um, my... Ooh, you broke through and you paralyzed me. Kind of douchey. Kind of douchey. We're going to heal that right off. Um, my client being very nice of them. Uh, we get along pretty well. So, uh, we brought them bagels last week. And, uh, yesterday, they brought in a dozen donuts for us auditors. Which was very nice. Unexpected, very nice. And these were not just your average run-of-the-mill... Uh, I was going to say Krispy Kremes, but those aren't average either. These weren't your uh, your Meyer Bakery donuts. These were some uh, local bakery. Um, you know, they they raised, I'm sure they raised the dough themselves or what, whatever you call it when they, when they bake something from scratch. Uh, just so you kids know, this is not super effective yet. It's not a fairy type of fairy. Um, but anyways, sugar, freaking sleep again. One of my co-workers, alright, one of the ones who was, eee, did kind of a lot. Hopefully I didn't gargle that away. Oh, it does like three per. Alright, we're good. I'm gonna heal up before risking that biscuit. I'm gonna heal up before risking that biscuit. So, one... <laughs> Whoops. There we go. One of my co-workers um, who gave me crap about it as a part of this story because what happened is one of the donuts was a vanilla frosting with fruity pebbles on it. So we started talking about what our favorite cereals were and what she mentioned was that she had never had cereal with milk before like with milk poured in and i was like i wasn't even like being sarcastic i was like oh are you lactose intolerant and she's like no like i eat cereal uh in a bowl with milk in a cup like separately what did a lot we're getting you right out of here boy we're getting you right out of here don't want to risk those biscuits. Uh, but speaking of pastry-related biscuits, uh, back to the donuts. Uh, so we were talking about cereal, right? And what blew my mind, because I, I was like, it's not the fact that you don't like milk and cereal. Like, I, I guess I could understand people thinking it's uh, a soggy consistency or something of the like. But I was like, it's just the fact that you never tried it you know the fact that you've never tried it is what <laughs> cons I don't know if concerns me is the right word but it's just like that's something I eat probably four or five times a week for breakfast is milk and cereal and uh, you've never tried it you're not allergic to it you've never tried it that was really just uh, and back to the, the point of I don't like Thai food but you don't try milk and cereal. It, it was just a uh, very, very um, concerning conversation of just what these millennials are up to. Um, you know, th this person, they were born a year uh, after me. And uh, so being the older and wiser of the two of us, I certainly had my concerns. Uh, just just had my concerns so we defeat junior trainer who says you play hard which is something I have heard since my basketball days you know not a lot of skills on that court but I do play hard how much more of this cave is left because all we have now is one max potion so I am gonna repel here um, and see if we're close but, oh, sugar. Those better double up. We got another trainer here still. All right, boys, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to make a quick cut because there's no reason for you to watch all this. Um, I'm going to go heal up, grab some super potions, and pop back right by this fine lady. So, not signing off yet. We'll be right back for the second half. All right, boys and girls, we're back, and we have made... 
What feels like the longest journey of my life to do just some simple housekeeping. Um, not only because we had to trek all the way to Vermilion uh, to get super potions and repels, but we had to walk down the lonely road, the road, the only road that I will ever know, and walk past the hiker who murdered Jobin twice. We had to walk past him twice. So, Boulevard of Broken Dreams has been walked past, and let me tell you, it took me every ounce of self-control to be the bigger man and not kick that man in the beanbag. But did I think about it? Yes. I thought about it many times, and Sergio told me if I did it, he would look the other way. So, ethics were in question. There was some ethical ambiguity. And sleep? Frickin' powder, man. I'm sick of these sleepers. I'm sick of it. Might as well bring a sleeping bag next time. My goodness. Let's burn these plants. Get out of my face. And we have a Pidgey next. We'll keep Austin in for that. Oh yeah, and then one more depressing thing. Uh, not quite as depressing as the Jobin Hiker, but uh, I did teach Austin Cut because he, we needed someone to have it um, to get back to the Route to Rock Tunnel after I deposited Jobin. And uh, besides that, um, you know, we're not at a point where we can really add a new member because we're training up Nick Man. So, it really seemed like the only logic. I mean, logical? Maybe not, but it was the only realistic thing to do because he was the only other uh, Pokemon we had. Secret item? Bop, bop, bop! Alright, secret item. And uh, we got a path here. So you can sneak by all these trainers, so so what you're saying is <laughs> I didn't have to do all that backtracking. I actually could have just faced that one last trainer and then we could face them. Hi kid, want to see my Pokemon? Why does that make me feel creepy? Ugh. Pokemaniac. I mean, it's really not. It's just the way he said it, you know. Hi kid. Ugh. Always a risky way to start a sentence. But we do see a Cubone level 20, and I am starting to feel a little better about our levels. I knew that was just going to take freaking 20 turns, so yes, we're going to switch. Um, let's let's get Nickman and then switch to A Bag on that one. I don't I don't like to use the speed up button that often, but I knew with both leading with the Growl that Cubone. And uh, just the nature of Kevin not being the strongest of the bunch, that was going to take five hours. So we're going to Thunderbolt this slow poke, and yeah, I'm feeling good about the levels. If we're seeing 20 being more standard, um, we do have plenty of trainers to face before we have to sell it on as well. So let's go up, and we don't need to repel anymore. Uh, is there any sort of encounter around here? Well, that's another question I have. Let's see what this lady says. I'm feeling a bit faint from this tough hike. You and me both. You and me both. Let's see some cliff bars. I mean, I'm feeling real faint right now. Feeling real faint. I keep forgetting to put Nick Man in the front, but he wouldn't have got much from uh, a Pidgey anyways. So this, this is one that's actually making Kevin look strong. Whirlwind not even affecting. I am curious, and let me know in the comments if you know, um, can you Whirlwind or Roar a Pokemon uh, that's a higher level than you? I'm not sure if you can. I'm really not. So let's go to, let's go to Cornus Boy here. Let's get him some PT. I keep like kind of thinking that Jobin is still at the bottom of the party and like avoiding putting him in. Um, but he is in the death box with with uh, Verners now. So uh, rest in peace, you two beautiful beasts. You will be missed and cherished forever. 
I'm not up to it with 420 cash flow. Ha 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 ha. Is this the guy who who fluffed up Jobin? Oh, sugar. A bag better be at full. A bag better be at full. At least we know he can wall these uh, self destructs as long as it's not a crit. Rock throw is 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 super effective, but still, like, my goodness, the uh, self destruct is way scarier than that. So I don't want to say we lucked out of that one, but uh, it could have been worse, is what I'm trying to get at. Onyx, this one I can switch on. This one I can switch on. Wouldn't it be freaky if Onyx could blow up? That would be really freaky. I'm just thinking of its giant head just blowing up. That's not great to take either. Ugh. Ugh. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I'm about to blow the lock just for some experience. My goodness. Nick Man growing to 20, so he's getting close to being a fully fledged member of the team. Is this guy just gonna laugh again? Ha ha. Not laughing. Ha hey. Fever. Ha ha. Chew. Th that's so fake. Ooh, we're trapped into this one. I am gonna heal up just because shenanigans happen. But uh, that was the fakest sneeze I've ever heard. So uh, I'm not even gonna say bless you, Chach. Let's put A-Bag in the front. Put Baggy in the front. Let's see what this man wants to pull on us. Ah, this mountain air is delicious. You know what? I can attest to that. I was, uh, I was in Utah about four months ago, and the mountain air is delicious. It just makes you want to say hallelujah. So let's use a bubble beam on this onyx before it can rock throw us. Level 19, so less than Nick Man. Uh, what's coming out? Graveler? Yep, so still, still gonna stay A-Bag. If it was something Nick Man could take on, I, I want to get him some playing time now that he's at a, a similar level to the trainers. Um, and also, I will mention this since the last episode, I looked up, uh, that cleared my head. You might be breathing in something more than just mountain air, my friend. Um, yeah, let's go heal and then see what we can see. Um... Voltorb does evolve from level up, um, so it is not one from, gosh diggity darn, uh, Thunderstone, which is okay, it is okay. Um, now, I will mention something that I've seen kill Nuzlocke before. Let's talk to this top hat guy first, though. Team Rocket will do anything for the sake of gold. Okay, digging for gold in my neighborhood death cab for cutie. Uh, I've seen people go in here because although you can't go all the way through uh, whatever this place is called, this tower, um, you can do the rival battle even before you have the sylph scope. And it's a lock killer because you might as well train as much as you can before that first, right? Uh, we have the Lavender Volunteer Pokemon House. I'm not going to volunteer. I'm not on probation. Oh, there's a Mart as well. Um, let's see what they have, just for reference. They have revives, which we can't use, and then all the standard stuff. This looks like Giovanni. I'm searching for items that raise the abilities of Pokemon during a single battle. All the X stuff that I'm never going to use. Do you know where to get them? Yeah, go to Celadon. They have Aerothang, boy! Uh, can we battle here, too? I'm not going to do it, but where is everyone? Oh, you gotta go through there, and we need to hit the vending machine first. I'm foreshadowing way too much of the story. But I just want to look around a little bit before we wrap this one up. We got uh, Glasses McGee who says, Hello, hello, I'm the official name Raider. Well, we're not going to be changing these anytime soon. So, uh, just keep drinking your coffee. I hate those horrible rockets that poor Cubone's mother... Okay, this is dark for a rated E game. It was killed trying to escape from Team Rocket. That is dark. Like, did they shoot it? My goodness. But we are going to take on this route starting next episode. We're going to take on this route on the path to Celadon where our next gym 
battle is. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We didn't lose anyone this time, thank goodness. And uh, we'll see you next time. Game Slam, signing off.